big three on three. Number one, a nightmare on I-95 as a tanker fire shuts down both sides of a very busy stretch of highway. I knew something bad was happening, but I didn't realize it was this bad. What leaders are saying about the damage and what it means for drivers. Number two, pro-Palestinian protests continue on campuses, including UConn. How the demonstrations could impact commencement ceremonies this weekend. Number three, Hartford Public School officials dealing with a budget gap. But some much-needed relief is on the way. How it will help students and staff. Now on Channel 3 and streaming on WFSB Plus, this is Eyewitness News at 6. They're going to probably take the bridge down within the next 48 hours. They're going to take both sides out, so they're going to, that will open the highway. And then they can worry about repairing it after. A traffic nightmare on I-95. The stretch in Norwalk impacted by an early morning tanker fire will now be closed for the next few days. Good evening and thank you for joining us for Eyewitness News tonight at 6. I'm Mark Zinni. Flames spread to an overpass that now has to come down before that part of 95 can reopen. We have team coverage for you right now on this big mess on 95. Channel 3's Dylan Fearon is standing by on how traffic is impacted. But we do want to start with New Haven Bureau Chief Matt. Matt McFarland, he has been in Norwalk all day and has much more on what happened there. Matt. Uh, good evening, Mark. Well, the governor of the Department of Transportation providing an update within the last hour. The good news is that tra tractor trailer, that tanker, that's been removed, but now the focus is on that charred bridge that is here in Norwalk. The hope is they can get this back open in time for the Monday morning commute, but the heat from the fire compromising that overpass. So this stretch is going to remain closed until they can get that bridge removed, and we're told demolition will start early tomorrow morning. Take a look at this incredible eyewitness video, and you can quickly realize how fortunate it is that no one was injured. According to those on scene, around 5.30 this morning in the southbound lane of I-95 near the exit 15 in Norwalk, a vehicle allegedly attempted to change lanes. That caused tractor trailer to swerve and hit another tractor trailer, ripping open the gas tank of that tanker carrying 8,500 gallons of fuel. The trail of gasoline, the flames quickly spreading between the three vehicles and the Fairfield Avenue overpass. Now, the Norwalk Fire Department right next to the scene, we're told every firefighter in the city responded to the three alarms fire, first hitting it with water and foam, trying to limit the amount of damage to that bridge. But the amount of fuel and the heat from the flames, it wasn't easy. The state saying this area of 95 will remain off limits until crews can tear down that burned out overpass. The heat from the burning fuel um, compromised some of the bridge. So that bridge is going to have to come down. Uh, that demolition is going to start um, First thing um, tomorrow morning, 3 a.m. in the morning, shears are going to come lift that bridge out. That could probably take um, 24 hours or a little longer than that. Then they're going to have to take a second look at repaving to make sure that the road is safe and uh, secure. We're hopeful that once we can start that work tomorrow morning, uh, we'll be able to have the bridge completely removed. Um, we'll work through the weekend and then hopefully have everything, as long as the weather holds out, have everything reopened uh, for the commute on Monday morning. Again, we're told the bridge just 10 years old. Again, you heard the governor say it. The work is expected to start around 3 tomorrow morning. They're going to work around the clock. Again, the focus now uh, is on the continued cleanup and also getting that bridge down, the demolition, so they can get this stretch of 95 back open. We're live with the mobile newsroom in Norwalk. Matt McFarland, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Okay, Matt, thank you very much for that update. Now, as you can imagine, the crash created a traffic nightmare in a very, very busy area. Channel 3's Renee Danino, Danino is joining us right now with a close look at the roads tonight. Renee. Hi. Yes. And you know, I have to tell you, it's still causing an issue. I just did a quick check through Danbury 84, one of your alternate routes, both east and westbound sides through Danbury, up to eight miles of backup on either side of the highway. Take a peek at your screen right now. Here's some real live drive times to consider. Obviously, Greater Hartford, Waterbury area, okay, but look at your ride through Fairfield County. That's actually a lot better than it was a little while ago. And the reason being is because we're still closed here, both sides of a 95 on the southbound side between exit 16 and 15, uh, Route 7 to 95 southbound that ramp. You're being detoured off at exit 16, 95 northbound close to exit 14, but you are being rerouted back on exit 15. Now, I do have to tell you, they're offering trains as an alternate. Well, the New Haven line from New Haven to New York, that is experiencing some pretty severe delays. And I do want to give you guys a heads up and take a peek at your screen right here. We do have local detours posted, you know, I-84, Route 7, the parkway, but the parkway they are suggesting if you're going to take it tomorrow, leave about an hour 
earlier than needed. Mark, back to you. You may want to just work from home tomorrow yes, if you can. Yes, good idea. Renee, thank you very much. Our team coverage continues right now. The shocking crash caused catastrophic congestion, as we know. Parts of 95 and Norwalk streets at a standstill tonight. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Dylan Fearon is in the thick of it all, right near exit 15, giving a closer look at really the headaches Dylan so many drivers are dealing with. Well, Mark, I'm along the highway with a lot of aggravated people right now. They're all inching forward, trying to get off at exit 15. These truckers have deliveries to make. These drivers just trying to get to Danbury, begging to get off the highway. But it's going to be a while. It's the major migraine refusing to quit. Aggravated, tense drivers inching forward on 95 South, eventually detouring off the highway. But the damage is done. The beautiful back roads they thought would be faster? Yeah, right. Took you two hours to get here? I knew something bad was happening, but I didn't realize it was this much. Some haven't lost their smile, despite being stuck in park for hours. We caught up with this New Hampshire truck driver, begging to get to Jersey tonight. These truckers have deliveries to make. Yeah, I'm probably not going to make destination time, so I'm probably going to deliver tomorrow. We're showing you the incredible congestion from up above, as far as Drone 3 can see. Benny Castellanos from Bridgeport is nervously checking his phone to see how long the ride home is. Well, it normally would take me probably between 25 to 30 minutes, and now it just took me, because of the accident and everything, because everybody's trying to get on the road, take me probably one hour and a half, two hours, just to get here. Over at Gentleman's Barbershop, the chairs are empty. Clients just can't get here. Westport Avenue is clogged. Yeah, we got a lot of people with appointment, but not they don't show up. Nah, not today. And Mark and Seventy, this is so congested here. You're looking at the on ramp onto 95. You're actually watching someone going in reverse to try to get off the on ramp here. That's just to avoid all of this mess. We've seen people just turn around driving the wrong way, and this causes uh, other concerns as well, even more congestion. So we've been seeing this all day long, and that driver right there just trying to go in reverse and back out to avoid all of this mess. We saw this morning how hectic it was for people trying to get to work. The governor warning everybody, work at home if you can, take I-84, take the train. Of course, that wasn't possible for everyone, and now it seems like the ride home is going to be just as hectic. We're live in Norwalk today. Tonight, I'm Dylan Fear in Channel 3 Eyewitness News. I mean, from, from gasoline in the car to everything else, Dylan, this is just so challenging for so many people. Thank you very much. Again, the stretch of highway, very, very busy. One of the busiest in the state. Just last year, there were about 483 crashes with injuries right along the 22-mile stretch of road here. Seven people died in those crashes. There is currently a DOT project in the works to improve two miles of 95 from exit 16 to 17. It would include building a concrete median barrier as well as some shoulder reconstruction there. Stay with Channel 3 Eyewitness News for the very latest on the crash here on I-95. We will keep you updated with any brand new information as soon as we get it. We'll bring it to you on air and anytime around the clock on the WFSB app. Some other news for you right now at 6. Protests continue to take place on the Yukon campus and stores. This is commencement ceremonies are set to happen coming up this weekend. Pro-Palestinian supporters gathering on campus still. They're outside the Dodd Center for Human Rights demanding an end to the war. They're also demanding that UConn divest with Israel. Every student has a right to protest what they believe. Um, all the students on our campus I know haven't been violent, thankfully. Now, earlier this week, police broke up in an encampment and arrested 24 students for criminal trespassing and some disorderly conduct charges there. Several graduations, again, are planned for this coming weekend throughout the state. UConn putting security measures in place right now to make sure nothing there gets disrupted. Straight ahead tonight, right here at 6, much needed funding for schools heading to the capital city. Just how much money and will it make a difference as they face layoffs and cuts? And a very pleasant evening underway across Connecticut after some afternoon clearing. Cloud cover increases through the overnight hours. We'll end the week dry with a mix of sun and clouds tomorrow. Temperatures more in line with what's typical for early May. A little bit cooler than today, relatively speaking. Uh, between 65 and 70 inland, closer to 60 along the Connecticut coastline. Uh, much more on a first alert for Sunday. Not only unseasonably cool temps, but the likelihood for rain impacting outdoor plans all ahead when Eyewitness News at 6 continues. Weather. It's
something that affects us all every day, from sunny to severe, and anything in between, the First Alert Weather Team has your back. It's a First Alert Weather Day. Severe thunderstorms are popping up. Issuing a First Alert Weather Day and preparing you for whatever Mother Nature has in store days before it happens. Your First Alert to heavy rain. That First Alert Weather app, a great tool to keep on hand. This is why we First Alert. The one team that prepares you for everything. Channel 3 First Alert Weather. When I go in, crank that roaster up, drop those beans, and watch it transform, that's a really good feeling. The best part of owning a business is doing this together. When we decided to turn our passion into a business, M&T was our first call. M&T definitely made us feel that they had our back. That means everything. I hope M&T Bank is ready to continue growing with us. We're not stopping. <laughs> I love working with my sons. Where are they? Today's backyard is so much more. A home office, kitchen, and a staycation. So make your spectacular with Cambridge. Our unique Armortech process keeps colors rich and they'll stay beautiful for years to come. You'll never want to leave. With Armortech, your other dreams come true. Seriously injured in a motorcycle accident? Call Trantolo and Trantolo today. Crews in Farmington were busy earlier this morning after a fire broke out at a home on Plainsville Avenue. They arrived and were able to quickly put out the fire. Part of the home, though, was damaged here. Thankfully, no one was hurt. The fire did close a portion of Route 177 in Farmington. It's open again tonight, though. There is still no word right now on what caused that fire. Heading to Norwich right now, where a man is facing charges in connection to a homicide from 2020. Police arrested 35-year-old Brandon Foster. Back in June of 2020, police responded to Laurel Hill Avenue for reports of a homicide where they found 66-year-old Edward McIntyre. He had been shot. Foster, along with 26-year-old Kendon Cole, are both facing charges. Still ahead right here, Hartford Public School officials working now to fix a budget gap for next year, but now some help is on the horizon. Trantolo and Trantolo presents Brad Paisley's World Tour, June 29th at Mohegan Sun, with special guest Tyler Farr, benefiting the Boys and Girls Clubs of Hartford. Tickets on sale at Ticketmaster. When a car accident happens, the parties tend to get caught up in the moment. Staying calm is best. The evidence is all right there in front of you. It's essential you take pictures of both cars and the scene of the accident. Prioritize taking photos of the other car, as this might be your only chance to do it before it's destroyed. This will be a key piece of evidence in most cases. When you play Mohegan Sun Online Casino, you can be up even in your downtime. Download the app today and get up to $1,000 back on your first day of play. I was lonely. I was trying to fill a void, and I got messed up in something that I had no idea what I was doing. I can't stress enough how important it was for me to get out of a 28-day program and then have something else. These were like people who came in and they, they saved my life. If you or someone you know is struggling with alcohol or drug addiction, call now. This summer's temperatures keep getting hot, hot, hot. Luckily, Harp Home Services is here to help keep you cool. Right now, get $50 off same-day AC repair. Or go ahead and upgrade that old unit and save up to $3,700 for a new full home comfort system. Same-day service, expert technicians, and a job done right the first time. Need service today? Harp's help is on the way. It's important to plan for your retirement. At Fuchs Financial, we can help you achieve financial stability and put our expertise to work for you. Minimize your taxes and maximize your retirement. Schedule a free portfolio review and tax analysis at FuchsFinancial.com. 
We continue to follow that fiery crash on 95 in Norwalk. These are images from earlier today. The highway in that area, of course, now closed for nearly 13 hours, creating a nightmare scenario for drivers. In a briefing just over an hour ago, the governor said the bridge is badly damaged, of course, and has to come down over the weekend. Demolition will begin tomorrow morning at 3. The goal is to have 95 back open for the Monday morning commute. This bridge is uh, less than 10 years old, uh, and uh, you know, but the damage was pretty severe due to the amount of gasoline that was in the tanker um, ignited directly underneath the bridge structure. The steel um, did begin to overheat and warp. Now, Governor Lamont also said he filed for an emergency declaration and hopes to get some federal help to replace the bridge. A lot of money there in the past hour. We also learned Norwalk schools will be closed tomorrow. If you drive on 95 in that area, we have some suggested highway detours to hopefully help you get around. However, keep in mind, traffic is really backed up all over the place right now. The Pinpoint News Tracker showing you some of the different areas in red. You can take 87 North in New York to the Mass Pike, reconnect with 95 in the Boston area. Another option, take 84 through Connecticut to the Mass Pike and meet up with 95 in the Boston area. Well, some help is on the way for the Hartford Public School System following budget challenges. The district was getting ready to cut almost 400 positions, but now the state and city are stepping in with some additional funding. It may be just the right, the right time. Channel 3 Hartford Bureau Chief Aya Galal has the latest. Hartford parents and students had marched to the state capitol last week, calling for more funding for Hartford Public Schools. Now those calls are being answered. $10.5 million back into our schools uh, to make sure that we can keep teachers where they are, to make sure that we can keep our schools strong uh, and striving, and to work together on, on a long-term plan for our schools. Hartford Public Schools are getting an additional $10.5 million in funding, $1 million from the city of Hartford, $5 million from the state of Connecticut, and $4.5 million from borrowing from funds set aside for retiree health benefits for Board of Education employees. And this is the beginning. It, it certainly doesn't solve everything in Hartford schools, but this is a commitment to working together to build strong schools for all of our kids. Hartford Public Schools were set to slash 387 positions across the district. But with this $10.5 million increase, the district says it'll likely restore some high school teaching positions to make sure students have varied courses. The district will also work to restore investments in social workers, social emotional support services, and early childhood literacy. This is epic. Um, as a, I just don't stand as a city councilman, but I stand as a father of two uh, young boys who are in the Hartford Public School System. In a statement, Hartford Public Schools said because the reinvestments have to be focused on responding to the needs of students, it is too early to comment on how many of our impacted staff might be retained. But those decisions will be our priority in the coming weeks. The district adds that conversations will continue on how to make sure Hartford Public Schools are financially sustained for years to come. In Hartford, Aguilar, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Well, we started the day as expected with uh, areas of fog and low clouds uh, taking a little bit longer to burn off across coastal and southeast Connecticut. But uh, as that process is taking place, temperatures responding nicely were up uh, notably compared to this time yesterday all across Connecticut. Here's a look at the actual numbers, and there's still quite a spread from 55 degrees in Groton to 25 degrees warmer right now at Bradley Airport. Winds are locked at 80 degrees. 76 in Torrington, 77 Tolland. Uh, Waterbury, 71, 76 right now in Danbury. So we have the cloud cover and as well the wind direction playing a big role uh, throughout southeastern Connecticut coming in across the cooler water of the Sound. Right now, 74 from Hartford. Lots of sunshine reaching the buildings there in our capital city. You can see the shadows growing a bit uh, on the green in the Elm City of New Haven where things are certainly much greener. Good visibility, of course, as well with the sleeping giant there off in the distance. And from southeast Connecticut, our sky is much bluer than what it was just a few hours ago, but it is that southerly wind at around nine miles an hour, keeping temps right now in the mid 50s. Now, just to our northeast, you can actually see this little counterclockwise churn, a little disturbance working across northern New England. This is heading southeast. Won't impact our weather here directly, and beneath that, much cooler air, and to our west, much warmer air. So, with a change in wind direction yet again as we close out the week tomorrow, temperatures trending back to early May like levels. Again, uh, as this area of low pressure. 
pressure scoots by. High pressure building out of eastern Canada will increase the flow, the onshore flow out of the east and northeast tomorrow. Uh, that will also bring in some scattered clouds and therefore temps tomorrow reach the mid and upper 60s inland, right in line with what's normal for this time of year and near the 60 degree mark along the Connecticut coastline. So first alert future cast for our Saturday. We still have that onshore flow, temperatures near what we're forecasting for tomorrow, partly to mostly cloudy, but dry. It is the better of the two weekend days if you're hoping to do something outdoors. We've got the Meriden Daffodil Festival happening this weekend, of course, Cinco de Mayo's on Sunday. So if you have plans to take it out and about Sunday, uh, we've got increasing chances for rain. Not only will rain become likely from the afternoon into the evening hours, temperatures are going to be held into the 50s. The one silver lining for Sunday, given the rain that we're expecting, that will knock down uh, uh, the tree pollen so on the allergy forecast some improvement there but it's going to be brief because as we head into early next week uh, we're going to dry out and warm up so high temperatures again on saturday in the mid 60s on sunday about 10 degrees if not more cooler and well below average for this time of year normal highs in the upper 60s so we've got that first alert tag now on sunday given the likelihood for rain impacting outdoor plans and those temperatures they're going to be running well below average so, uh, as we head into monday increasing sunshine we're back well into the mid 70s inland cooler at the shoreline couple degrees warmer on tuesday then we're tracking a, a midweek storm system uh, wednesday into thursday based on where a warm front sets up uh, increasing the chance for some showers through the middle part of next week but temperatures remaining in the low and mid 70s for highs okay mark thank you very much well all new for you at six some new destinations from bradley make it a breeze to get out of town breeze airways announced some new flights to myrtle beach and cincinnati are now available fares also start at just 49 dollars for a one-way trip if you buy by May 7th. Yesterday, Breeze also announced uh, some new service to San Diego. The CBS Evening News is coming up next, and here is a preview. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, parts of the U.S. are bracing for a massive bug invasion. What you need to know about the cicadas set to emerge by the billions within weeks. That and more headlines tonight on the CBS Evening News. And then ahead on Eyewitness News at 7, the latest on the fiery crash that will have 95 shut down throughout the weekend. A live report next. Plus, the latest from McGroton High School, where fentanyl was found in a school bathroom. What school leaders are telling families tonight. I'm a martial artist, a skydiver, a pilot, and all of them require your feet to work. Get up in the morning and it felt like I was standing on marbles on my heel. When I went into the Good Feet store, the fitting was personalized. It was all about me. You put in the art supports and your day becomes better and the sun shines, the unicorns run by and, you know, it's a good life. I'm Randy and that's my Good Feet story. See for yourself with the free personalized art support fitting at the Good Feet store. Dan, these Nicolak paving stones look amazing. Yeah, they're supposed to last for generations, but who knows? I have a time machine. If you want to find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What? We said no kids. What changed? You know what hasn't changed? The color on these Nicolak paving stones. Mom, of course you can move in with us. Uh, wait, what? Look on the bright side. The Nicolak paving stones still look amazing. Nicolak paving stones with paper shield. Ask for it by name. You'll see the difference. If you're 55 and up, T-Mobile has plans built just for you. It's like two lines of unlimited for just 30 bucks a line. That's a 45% savings versus Verizon and AT&T. Plus, get one of the latest 5G phones free when you add a line. Experience it all on America's largest and fastest 5G network. At T-Mobile, customers 55 and up can get two lines of unlimited for only 30 bucks a line. Switch today. I'm here for you. I'm Nora O'Donnell with the CBS Evening News. This personal breakthrough was powered by a medical one. The discovery of a drug that uses a patient's own immune system to successfully treat lung cancer. Yale Cancer Center and Smilo Cancer Hospital. Together, we're powering breakthroughs. Create the ultimate entertaining hotspot with Tacoma Bar Collection from New England Patio and Hearth. Tacoma Bar offers unlimited design possibilities for indoor and outdoor entertaining. There's a style to living at New England Patio and Hearth. 
the direction interest rates are going these days, it's nice to know that Pilgrim has your best interest at heart. With up to 60 months zero interest with no minimum purchase and no down payment. So you can get everything you need with low monthly payments. Like a sectional for just $25 a month or a four-piece bedroom set for just $25 a month. Shop store-wide savings of 40 to 50% off guaranteed. Get your best interest through Monday only at Pilgrim Furniture and Mattress City. Locally owned, Connecticut grown. I'm going to make this real simple. National Floors Direct will be anyone's price on flooring by 15% or it's free. It doesn't matter what the sale or offer is. We'll beat their price by 15% or it's free. Call 888-400-FLOOR and we'll bring the store to your door. This personal breakthrough was powered by a medical one. The discovery of a game-changing drug that's delaying the onset of type 1 diabetes for years to come. Yale School of Medicine and Yale New Haven Health. Together, we're powering breakthroughs. Going town by town right now, first to New Haven, where young students from the Sound School got some hands-on learning experience on water quality and some environmental issues. They all took part in a special workshop with the Shoreline Trolley Museum outside. The students, they were able to learn about the different aspects and impact of water quality. To Simsbury right now, where tickets to the 2024 Talcott Mountain Music Festival are now available. Various shows taking place every Friday from June 28th through July 26th. All the shows take place at the the Simsbury Meadows Performing Arts Center, which also has additional shows all summer long. All right, plenty of time outside. Good tomorrow, good for Saturday. Not so great for Sunday. Tomorrow, actually a little bit cooler, of course, compared to today. Uh, mid and upper 60s. Some towns inland could touch 70 under a mix of sun and clouds. A bit cloudier on Saturday. Maybe a degree or two cooler compared to tomorrow. Again, the better of the two weekend days. We've got that first alert for Sunday. Given not only the rising chance for rain as the day moves forward, but also temperatures will be 10 to 15 degrees, perhaps below average. So keeping in line with our, our Monday trend, yes. uh, we're back to beautiful to start next week. Just in time. I think I'm going to take the day off. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. All right. Deny it. I'm going to deny it. Hey, by the way, the news continues. Breaking news coverage at 7. We'll see you later on at 11 o'clock. Have a good night, everybody. Thousands of people have downloaded the WFSB Plus app on their streaming device. And you can, too. Grab your remote, go to your home screen, find the search option, then type in WFSB. Select and download. From there, you're ready to see live newscasts, first alert weather on demand, and exclusive content. All free. WFSB Plus. Available now on your favorite streaming